with a junior welterweight special attraction from Oakland, California, introducing Joaquin Killer Gallardo. Well, I'm really excited today. Uh, you know, we trudged through this crazy weather to have a really special guest uh, on a fluke, randomly on one of the sets I was working on, just doing background. You know, come up on someone who's super legendary in the boxing game. Uh, had 31 professional fights already that I know of, and uh, we're gonna learn and peek into what his world is like, and what kind of uh, spirit you need to be a fighter in uh, modern day. You know, uh, super welcome to uh, the stage here or the uh, show, uh, Conversations with Master of Thought. Uh, Wikin Gallardo, thank you very much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I guess the quickest question, or the easiest question, I think we should start off with is uh, one of the last one we were just talking about. Like, where did you come from? You know, what got you to come all the way over here, and then what sparked your boxing interest? Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> been a long time now yeah. since you. It's no longer. Right. It's more like an obsession, right? Yeah. Well, it's a lifestyle. I'll yeah. Say. Yeah. It, it it became a lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, but. In the beginning was uh, as a child with cousins coming over to the house and playing around and getting into scuffles. I think that's what incited the, uh, the career because uh, me and a cousin had an altercation where one of my tooth got knocked out and Ooh. I don't remember the actual altercation happening, but I know that the, the, the emotions and everything from that incited me to like want to get revenge and to learn martial arts really and mm. boxing and everything that goes along with it. Yeah, so uh, my stepdad Robert ended up seeing it and I guess he was like, you want to get, you want to get revenge? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll take you to a place where you, you learn how to, how to do it right. So he took me to the boxing gym and then even there, they saw me and said, well, who's that? And he's like, oh, I brought a killer with me. And they said, a killer? And they started cracking up, like, he's no killer because he's such a cute little kid. Right, and, right, um, right. They threw me in the ring. And it was just nonstop action ever since. And they were like, oh, he's a real killer. And then that's, that's when the, the name just stuck. So, oh, so that's how you got your... That's how I got the nickname Killer. Got yeah. it, got yeah, it. Yeah. So, like... I guess it coming up, did you have like an extensive uh, amateur career or was it just like? Um, yeah, yeah. But my amateur career, I guess I was trying my, my professional career mm. because uh, my a national champion multiple times um, and then Olympic alternate for 96 Olympics. So we'll considered the Olympic team uh, with Mayweather, Fernando Vargas, Antonio Tarver. Uh, good, I think the last real good team that we had uh, in the yeah. Olympics I can see since, what you're saying. ever since, yeah. right, because that was, uh, like I said, the last, the last of a dying breed there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, um, I'm not even going to say really that they're the old school. It's like, I feel they were the more dedicated or more hungry era. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, definitely de dedicated, more hungry, just different, different um, upbringings, different, I guess, environments that and also teachings too, because maybe yeah. the, the work ethic, I think, is more instilled back then than it is now. It's just more complacent, but everybody's more relaxed and trying to do the least amount to get the most, uh, uh, I most hear results. You. I hear you. That's probably one of my biggest complaints now. And even though a lot of people will put me into the millennial uh, category, <laughs> category yeah, you terrible. know, just because of my birth date, you know, but I truly don't see myself that kind right. of a person. Right. Uh, I'm one of those traditionalists or like hardworking, uh, old school ethic kind of person. Yeah. And like, you know, that's why you stood out to me. You know what I mean? Even though like, I kind of just met you like ra on a random fluke. Yeah. But even though we were just doing background, you still took it to the level. You know that's what I mean? Right. It was still yeah. like, like, oh, he's, he looks like the person he's trying to be. You know right. what I mean? And uh, I still have a lot of fun, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <me laughs> Those too. kind of shoots are really fun. Um, I guess that's another part. We'll kind of go skip back to, uh, you know, all the other people that you've been around. But 
What sparked your interest in this uh, acting even? Like, oh. what, what got you to come out that day? You know, especially for such a small yeah, uh, yeah. You know, role in, in a play well, like that. My first, it, well, as acting, in acting, I, I got introduced at, I was like around 10, 11 years old. They were supposedly doing a Pepsi commercial. Mm -hmm. And the crew set, everything was having me spar and everything. And, but it didn't get aired. And supposedly we didn't know. Yeah. Um, it could have got aired in a, in a third world country, but we, we didn't. Right. We weren't up on the game at that time. So, but that, that was my first introduction to, to, I guess, acting. And then um, I've seen uh, greats come to the gym, champions. Because um, King's Gym was a well-known place. And at that time, Marsha, she was the Charles King's wife. Mm. She's the, the main, she was the main, like, uh, we could say, factor in that or force in, in that gym that brought, like, Showtime, uh, acting, uh, just brought attention to the gym and to boxing. And I saw Julio Cesar Chavez, met Julio Cesar Chavez. That was, like, a dream come true because of my, he was my idol coming up. Um, just a great Mexican champion that I was good to see in person. And uh, Terry Norris, I'm just a lot of good wow. fighters coming through and, and now and seeing like the behind, behind the scenes, the cameras, the how it goes, um, the director and everything else, cameraman, it's cool. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you already know that I'm, I'm already doing a lot of different things in film and I've definitely considered you already like, <laughs> if I got roles coming up, you know, yeah. you're, you're obviously in my network already, oh, you right know, on. so. As we build cool. this out, you know, things are yeah. gonna get more probably straight up live acting for you. So good. Mean? So we'll right. we'll see what we can do yeah. moving forward. Um, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and touch on, you know, those greats that you've been around all that time, you know, like I was talking about with this warrior spirit, you know, you obviously drove your own warrior spirit for yourself. Uh, let, let's go back to like when you were your teenage years. You know, yeah. obviously this is where your amateur career is happening and like, what is it, you know, besides being tough, you know, what kind of mental trials were you going through, uh, especially like building up for a fight, uh, you know, going into like, you know, maybe your 10th fight, 15th fight, you know, what did you feel inside of yourself that kept urging you and yearning you forward to want to keep doing this? Um, it's hard to say because it was so easy to me. It, mm. It's always been easy, um, training hard or, I mean, there's times when you don't want to do it and, but once you get out there and do it, it's like, it's, I, it takes, it takes care of itself pretty much. Yeah. Like me going out to go run, running I, is like the least of, of my, um, I, I likes, I, I hate doing right, it, right. I hate running, but when I'm out there and doing it, it's, it's like, man, easy. Why, why, why can't I just do this more often? But uh, that, that's one of, um, yeah, I could say it's easy. The, the way how it's been easy, um, and also my, my ability to absorb and display the knowledge, hmm. that, I, that too. So you're saying like, uh, let's say, when you're saying display, do you mean like for others looking to come up in your uh, into your craft or like? Um, display isn't like I was always when I was taught I was able to to display the the, the teachings. Got it. Got it. So like when they ask you for an adjustment, you right. were able to show the adjustment like right. that. Right. Usually, Got yes. It. Yeah, it feels, yeah. It feels, yeah. Got it. Okay. So. I guess you could say like it was more, this is something more innate in you and you kind of yeah. just had to come upon it. Right. And yeah. And luckily I was put in the right or I guess guided in the right direction mm -hmm. for, to, to flourish, for me to flourish, my, 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 my well, talent to flourish. That brings up another question. So let's say, who was it that helped guide this uh, talent of yours? You know. There's the, got to be someone. My stepfather, yeah. Mm. He's the, the only person I could, because he, he's the one that, that saw me in action in that altercation with my cousin. 
and said, I know you need to go. And then he took me there. And then from there, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, he took this was made so, now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so let's, let's talk about like even the bigger boys that you were around. I mean, like the whole Olympic alternate and like. I, well, during my training, trying to become an Olympian myself, yeah. there was Andre Ward in the gym. Um, maybe it was a little bit after, but nonetheless, when he, be, he started the gym, he was young, um, saw me, and I was, I guess, an example to him. Mm -hmm. And he took it, look, look where he took it himself. And right. So, but I'm, I'm glad I was able to, to be a role model to him. And not just him, but many others. But I mean, and he took it to where it's it's gone. So, yeah, it's just, it's it's nice. Yeah, and like I know for sure you had sparring sessions with these guys, right? I mean, <laughs> how's that? Yes. You know, seeing like knowing you're you're able to do these things, and just like like you said, it's easy to you. How does it feel that you know? being later in the game and coming back to it, is, do you still have that easy feel? Is it still like... <laughs> yeah, I <right>? do. Right? <laughs> it's kind of like I've, I've been given the... Um, kind of like you won't be, you've been given the answers, but even though you have the answers, it's on you to, uh, to, make, to put those answers into, into fruition. Make, yeah. make something happen from... Because you got... It's like you have the tools, you have the rest... Like making it something. Yeah. Bake it, cooking. Yeah. You have the recipe, you have the ingredients, so and you have everything you, it takes to make it. So make it happen. Oh man, I'm glad you said that. Because like, especially today, I feel like uh, being ignorant is a choice. Uh, absolutely. You know, because like, you said it yourself right now, if we have all of these ingredients, all this other stuff, what's the additional factor that counts the most? And you're saying it's action. Right. On your part, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and like, I could say that for myself, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, are you a believer in, you know, like excluding all negative, uh, like aspects of your life and then kind of like shedding it away and moving into positive habits right. causes all of the greatness? Or is it like, you know, even with the negative habits, are you still able to like procure that greatness? It, it's, it's tough. Um, yeah, even with the negative habits, you still have to persevere because negativity is a constant and right. it's never going to go away. But so, so it's the same with positivity. Right. So it's on you to relate, re, uh, distinguish what's positive, what's negative. And like Bruce Lee said, like, take the good, take, yeah. keep it, whatever is not good, yeah, dispose of it and right. keep on going. Oh, oh, since you brought that up. Um, what has been your like aspect or your style to how you see boxing? Because I feel like uh, a lot of people today think it's kind of like a cookie cutter effect. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, let's teach them the jab. Let's teach them the straight. Yeah. Excuse no. me. And then, yeah, you see what I'm trying to it's say? It's so complex. Yeah. There, there's right. So, so many factors involved mm -hmm. in to becoming that person, that champion, that whoever you see on top right now, to, to get to that level, it, it's a lot of work, a lot of work. And not just work, it's um, got to be in the right place at the right time, know the right people, yeah. have the right connections. And it, it's, it's a kind of a, a formula that can't be cookie, like a cookie cutter. There's no cookie cutter yeah. formula. Oh, yeah, definitely. But the hard work, um, and the, the benefits you're going to get from it, that will never be taken away. So You're right. So if you can willing to put in the hard work, you're going to you're gonna get results. Yeah. Um, and I think positive results. But it, it takes a lot of work and dedication to, to get to that level. I, I want to point out something really, uh, you know, this is because the point you're making really happened to myself. Um, there was a time before all of this started where I'm actually filming and all this and I, I was looking for something, you know, more because I was doing the whole personal training thing, already training people in boxing and like other martial arts. Right. But I wanted, or I, sh I should say I needed a creative outlet 
and um, with someone randomly walking into the gym that I was working at the time, Shalama Mazzaro, you know who you are, uh, and she was looking for a stunt coordinator, looking for all these specific things. Mm. And to go to go on your point, you're saying that, you know, having being prepared, all of those skills that you trained, you you attained during that time, they can't take it away. Right. And I was completely prepared to take whatever offer this woman was about to give me, you know, because there'd be no other way, yeah. you know, because in the interim of the time when I was, you know, getting bored with what I'm doing or looking what direction I'm trying to go in, I was still training, right? you know, and like you said, they can't take that away. They can't no. take the knowledge or experience away. And um, shoot, now I'm sitting on a couch with you, right? you know, so. Right. Um, and it's a process that once you begin, I mean, you, you feel, see the results. Yeah. And like you said, once, once you got to that level where it was, you were ready to hit the ground running, where to take on whatever, because it was already embedded in you and you already did the work and you know what to expect and you knew that you were ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk about the moments before you switched over to becoming a pro. Mm -hmm. And I know at the time when you guys were doing the Olympics and the style of uh, the bouts being judged were highly based on points. Right. 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 And um, I guess I want to say, like, how difficult was the transition going from a point system, you know, in that way, in that aspect, and then going into pro where it's like you're trying to dismantle this person piece by piece? You know? It wasn't that hard because from the amateur, I mean, the, the, the concepts are the same to win in boxing is to hit and not get hit. Hmm. to score and don't get scored upon. And from that, we've, we've transitioned to the pros. It's, it's a little comp more complicated in the pros because the gloves are smaller, no headgear, yeah. less protection. Um, yeah, and, and the bright lights, the crowd, the announcer, everything. There's a lot of details that, that differ from the amateurs and pros. And, but the... The core is to score, not get scored upon. And I think Floyd was a good example of doing that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Fernando Vargas, he 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 was taught that, but I mean, we, he he had the uh, the Mexican blood in us that kind of yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's like when you piss us off, we want it. Right. We want to get you back. Yeah. And. Uh, it is what it is, but that's, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so you guys never really played the point game? We're, we're um, yeah, no, no, you have to because that's how you win. Okay. You gotta play the point game. But I mean, like, you're, cause you're saying that it was not the too amateurs, difficult. It was that. more score points. And in the pros, it's not just score points, but do damage, mm. do damage. Cause if okay. you're not doing damage, then you're not really, um, cause the more damage you do in the pros relates to a lot, uh, a lot of excitement. Mm. That's what people want to see excitement. Right. Right. And if you, if you're not damaging, you're not exciting. If you're not exciting. They don't want to see you. They don't want to see you. So, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Like that's and what I'm trying in, to in figure the amateurs, out. It was, um, scoring, score a lot and don't get scored upon, but it, I mean, if you're, if you're in the mix, punching, exchanging, you're there, it's, it's, uh, hard, it's hard, it's hard, hard, I mean, it's more, no, I'll go on and on. That's right. yeah, I mean, no, yeah, no. It, all, it takes time sometimes, like, the um, words that you want to say don't always come out, yeah. you know, but um, I think you're trying to touch on the point, like, I feel in pros, you cause the damage not only to uh, create the excitement, but it causes a faster win. Oh, absolutely, right? yes, yes. And then yes. in uh, like amateurs for myself, like what I've noticed is there's a lot of coaches that kind of just, again, before the point system switched uh -huh. over, were just forcing their fighters to just throw wildly, uh, getting you know more of like a, 
larger numbers. Yeah. Just being thrown and you know by accidental touch. Right. And again, you know, there's some coaches, not all, not yeah. all. Uh, I think it's more like fighters who are more on a desperate climb, trying to come up. And um, yeah, as as over the years, because I've been in the, about a decade just watching the amateurs develop. And when they switched over to more of a pro style um, fighting system, mm. everybody changed. It was more like you got to see a lot more of the style of these kids were, that are coming up, a lot more of the uh, true toughness besides just being, you know, pity patted on. Right. And um, I think the transition now going into pro is a lot easier as far as, uh, you know, the point system, the point style. But the styles these days are so different you know like back then it was very um I'm, I'm, and i'm gonna go back as far as you know where it was still black and white muhammad ali days yeah, yeah. you know it was more of a stand hit and then move. yeah, yeah. stand right, hit and right move. right right and now to the, these days you know like especially you know in your era yeah. your era yeah. is where everything started to change absolutely where yeah. everybody was stepping and moving at the same time ducking right. and hitting at the same time right all of these new gestures of the body where they weren't doing that back right, then, yeah, you know. Right, and by yeah. by you guys going into like this whole like, I don't want to say that it's advanced. I'm gonna say that it's it's even more stylized instead of saying that it's advanced because you know we, we hear it all the time. We hear styles win fights, yeah. You know? and, and without your era coming in and changing up that style, I feel we would still be having a lot more slower fights. People just kind of like standing around waiting for the uh, ref, you know, to pull them away, kind of thing. But now with, with people moving around just so much more and like, look at this Lomachenko guy. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, th things like that, like, have really changed the game for it's myself. It's more evolved, it evolved. Yeah, it's evolved. yeah. It's still, still evolving. Yeah, and, and like, I guess I, I could ask you, what's your theory on um, switching your stance in the middle of a fight? I used to be against it, but then I started doing it myself and I'm like, <laughs> wow yeah it's like um big difference right absolutely big yeah. difference and the big difference for me was just taking punches or defense because i'm not used to that stance mm. i'm used to the right stance so I, I know how punches come at from from this angle now I'm, I'm a different angle and things aren't coming the way the same same way right. so that's foreign to me but i notice different um different strengths, different weaknesses. Yep, yep. Uh, my, my dominant hand is doing, hitting a lot harder than, right. for certain punches than they were at the other stance. It's weird. And um, I guess I'd want to point out, do you feel like your game got even better? Yes, absolutely. Right? Yes. Yeah. Cause, it was uh, like, um, it's like playing video games and you're getting a, a, an extra level or something new, some new territory. Like what? Yeah, I didn't know this was here and now, Another resource to tap into. Yeah, and I, I want to back it up with some science. Yeah, um, absolutely. Wh whoever wants to fact check me, go fact check this. But uh, as I understood it, and I heard this from another podcast where you train the opposing side, let's say like this side gets injured, right? Oh, yeah. You train the other side and this side will maintain its muscle mass because you're telling it to, visualizing it, you know, because you, you can't, you may not be able to train it at the time, but because you're training the other side, this side's getting some benefit. Yeah. So you coming back on and like trying to learn or procure a new skill, it actually learned it during yeah. the time that it was injured. I'm in total agreement. Right. So I mean, that's I think why we why we have two two limbs. Yeah. And because if one's we use the other one. Mm -hmm. and Adaptation. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I want to get a little more deeper into like, you know, because you're an automatic role model now. You know, like people look up to you, you know, especially the younger generation and see like what you can do, especially coming up in this, right. in this area that we're at right now. Right. Um, what, what would you want to say to anybody that's uh, looking to become great? And it uh, doesn't have to be, you know, you know, pro fights or anything like that. I mean, just being great as a human being or, or great in your community, you know? Yeah, always uh, to be... Um, open-minded, mm. be open-minded, because change is is constant, and just be open-minded, be non-judgmental to new things, because new things, um, new things is what 
innovates us. That's innovation. So if you're not open to that, then you're kind of you're kind of keeping yourself from from knowledge. You're, you're holding yourself back. Yeah. So yeah. have an open mind. I, I I totally agree. That's yeah. probably one of my biggest, one of my most favorite uh, aspects to becoming great. Yeah. You know, people who have an open mind. You know, people who have an open mind are able to take in a lot more information. Like you were talking about being a sponge. Yeah. Right. And then the sponge doesn't have to be about fine. The sponge can be about, you know, uh, building buildings. It can be about, uh, you everything. know, being some of the best gardeners and farmers that, you know, that we essentially need in right. this day and age, you know. Yes. Um, and work hard. But, but that goes along with the... Yeah. With everything, you gotta work hard. Work hard, open mind, and just... And don't be scared of that hard work. Yeah. You know, I, f I feel like, uh, like I said, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I wanna reserve some of the words I would say about this generation, but, you know, I feel like as, as I'm getting older, I'm seeing a lot more uh, weaker-hearted or weaker-minded people that are on the follow train. Yeah. You know, the people that are just looking to follow others, thinking Absolutely. that getting your likes, you know, getting your uh what else whatever you get on there yeah, you know I likes agree. and comments and like you, 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 like most of the most recently thing that uh instagram just did they took away the likes people can't see how many likes you got on there you know you're the only one that's patting your own ego by looking at it at this point <laughs> right and so i was like man if it takes a, a corporation knowing that everybody's falling into a depressed state to take away likes, you right. know, I, for myself, I feel it's not the core issue, you know, take it, it does help, it yeah. does help, you know, because nobody's saying like, oh, I got this, I got right. that, but I think one of the core issues that today's people are missing out on is that communication. Absolutely. Right, because this right here, you can't get this any other way. And expression. Yeah. Lack of expression, people hold things in. You need yeah, to express. You're right. Express. I you're mean, right. movement is a, a, a way to express as well, and that that's, ties into the Bruce Lee. Yeah, um, yeah, concept. yeah, totally, man. But expressing, yeah, we have to express ourselves more. You're hitting on all the like, right things that I thought that I would think a warrior spirit would have. You know. Yeah. Um, I guess from here, like. I know you still got a whole bunch of things set up for yourself moving into the, uh, the boxing world still. Uh, do you have anything that you want to like? Trying, I'm still trying. Cause I mean, yeah. at my age, not, uh, people aren't calling me up or promoters aren't knocking down, knocking on the doors like, hey, can we need you? Right. Because, but my age. But I mean, once I show them, I have to, right. I have to, well, the, 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 uh, I want to take into this. Uh, I, I don't know this gentleman's name off the bat, but um, he's a doctor from Australia. He's oh. Filipino. This is the only reason that he even got up on my uh, radar. And uh, I think he went 7 0 MMA fighter down in Australia. Wow. And I think he's still fighting. Uh, I'll check up on it. Uh, but he's pretty much saying, like, it doesn't matter your age. Yeah, it's it how skilled are you? Right. It's how, and you know, That's as so brutish true. as that sport is, That's true. he's over here getting knockouts on people yeah like I said seven and zero. Oh, right right so um, yeah that's not gonna stop you right. I already know that like <laughs> uh, we're gonna be working together in the, in the near future so uh, I feel um, with this you know oh yeah, yeah what, what are you looking forward to as far as uh, within the next year or so where do you want to um, where do you see yourself and if there's anything anything that you want to like holler a shout out that you want uh, people to, you know, check out on the internet. It would be a good time to do it too. Yeah, uh, I have no room. I hope to uh, compete in the U.S., hopefully on TV. Hmm. Um, that's that's uh, hopefully happening within the next year um, that I hope, or I'm trying, because I've been, I've been training since 2013, and we're in 2019. I didn't think it would take this long, but yeah. Yeah. Um, better late than never. I'm, right. I'm very patient. 
Uh, but I look forward to competing on U.S. soil um, on TV. Cool. Um, obviously, I'm going to shout that out for you, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, that's not a problem. Uh, all right. To get us back on course, um, I'm still building out a platform here. Uh, I'm still testing a lot of waters. For all of those that are already following, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm going to continue to drive and see what I can do as far as touching out in the community. And um, again, I want to thank you for coming on to this show. No problem. Thank You're, you for having me. Total insight to like how you do what you do as a warrior spirit. And um, check us out on my Instagram is Master of Thought. Uh, you can find me on Facebook also as Archimedes. Uh, I think I have it on there as Master of Thought too. You can uh, probably search me out there too. And that's about it. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, try it on. <laughs>